Thank you so much, Sierra. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and to our County Administrator and to our leadership team, and also most importantly to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, welcome to the Thursday, July 1st, 2021 virtual uh, Board of Commissioners work session. We will call this meeting to order. Uh, public comment. Clerk, do we have anyone here sign up for public comment this morning? Uh, good morning, Chairman. No, we did not have anyone sign in, but I would like to extend it um, in case anyone has called in. Are there any citizens that would like to speak at the work session this morning? Chairman being none, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Clerk Watson. We're going to move on, Board of Commissioners. We, we have the approval of the minutes. So I encourage you to please take a look at those minutes tomorrow. Uh, we have the commission minute meeting um, meeting minutes of June 22nd in our work session, minutes of June 21st, 2021 in our executive session minutes. So please, I encourage you to take a look at those and be prepared to approve or deny accordingly. Public hearing, we have tab number four, Board of Commissioners. We have tab number four, an approval of, for a new pond broker license for second amendment pond. Uh, I, Ron Roberts, I know this would be an item that you will be discussing. Would you like to add? Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, no, ma'am, this is going to be a public hearing for, for the uh, the pawn shop that was approved June 8th, um, uh, 2021 on veterans at 1151 Veterans Memorial Highway. And uh, this is pursuant to our, our code, uh, uh, Section 1260, which requires this license to, to uh, have a public hearing and come forward. The applicant will be Adele Ackerman, and uh, she will be uh, on the call uh, next Tuesday, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Manager Roberts. For the commissioners, tab number five, we have a resolution. Uh, there's resolutions and there's approval of various resolutions adopted each term for tax commissioner's office. And um, certainly it's 2021 through 2024, term subject to final legal review is resolutions approving the waiver of certain uh, penalties and interests, resolution of judicial and RAM, uh, resolution to sell um, property for less than taxes owed and demolition costs, resolution for street lights, resolutions delegating authority to process and administer refunds, resolution to authorize tax commissioner to waive certain amounts of taxes owed, resolution to authorize tax commissioner to waive certain interests and penalties owed, resolution of acceptable forms of payment or AD uh, Avalorum taxes, tax commissioner's authorization forms to accept payment to disperse to uh, entities to correct clerical errors to accept online payment for taxes. We have our own tax commissioner here this morning, uh, tax commissioner Greg Baker to elaborate on this uh, particular uh, topic. Are you are you there, tax commissioner? I'm here. I'm here. How is everyone this morning? Great. Okay. Basically, these are the resolutions that should have been done earlier in the year. Uh, we're getting around to getting them done now, and it just basically most of them are just resolutions that give me permission to uh, do certain things that the board of commissioners need to approve. Um, and they kind of speak for themselves. So the one resolutions where we have, where we uh, can basically demo property and then, or either, or repair the property. Uh, that's the most, that's the newest one uh, that came about from other tax commissioners and going to tax commissioner school, finding out what they've been doing. Uh, and that one just gives us the authority. If we've had, if we had a property that hasn't so sold at its tax sales and three or four sales because it's a, a blight on the community, it gives us the authority to either demo the property or go in and fix it up. Uh, and again, we would come back before you to ask what you would want to do and get permission and give you a cost of what it would be to fix it up or demo it so that we can sell it at a uh, tax sale and, and gather those taxes. So that's the only one that is really new. The rest of them are uh, standard authorizations that's been on the books for a while. We just needed to update them and get them uh, going for this year. And that's the only one that's new in the bunch. So 
And again, we would come before you guys and ask you what you want to do. When we came to a situation like that, give you a cost of demolition, cost of refixing the property, uh, and then ask your permission to move forward so that we can sell it. And then we'd sell it and regain the taxes. And that gives us the authority to regain any cost that is incurred to either refurbish the place or demo the place. So all costs would be included in that. And all the rest, like I said, are just standard resolutions. So is there any questions from the board? Madam Chair. You're muted, Madam Chair. Thank you, County Administrator. Um, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Tax Commissioner. Good morning, Commissioner. All right, so I, I get the resolutions and, and obviously I understand the power of constitutional officers. And um, as you deliver services to the people, you have certain capacity that is given to you from on high, I understand. So I'm very clear on that. And, and but I understand our role uh, which is a check and balance to, to all of them, task commissioners, judges, coroners, et cetera, sheriffs, got it. My, my question then, and given this, this, this signing off on this resolution, I'm going specifically to one thing, um, um, condemning of property. Um, and I'm, Commissioner Mitchell, I need you to hear this. So we had a program called the Neighborhood Stabilization Plan that came into effect back in during the Great Recession. Um, this is when the feds gave us um, some money. Ron, pay attention, Ron Roberts, gave us a certain amount of money um, to refurbish these properties uh, and to return them back to, to market to get people into their homes. And it was a good program. While there was some political opposition about doing so, wow. it was like it was appropriate. Um, guys, y'all got to turn your phones off. All right. So now here we are um, with, with the pandemic. You know, it has the same effect regarding um, impact economically. And you now have power. So my question is, is that, well, since the neighborhood stabilization plan is wrapping down, we're, we're, we're going down on that. Where are you going to put these properties that you condemn? Do you have um, a land bank? Um, Commissioner Guy and I have had conversations in time past when that has come up, um, the use of the land bank, which we never did anything with. Commissioner Mitchell, I know you run the residential, um, obviously, uh, um, um, committee um, for us, but where are you going to put these? And what is, I mean, you're in the business of collecting taxes and doing so forth. And it's like, uh, is there something in place that we can help you do your job better? Like, okay, guys, we have the constructs. We have the capacity to be able to do these things. Um, how do we help work together to make this work? So my question is, are you putting this in a land bank and, or you just keep these on the books because you're the tax commissioner? How does that work? Once you condemn, where does it go? Well, that's gonna. That's where I come back before the board of commissioners, and and you can decide what you want to do. We can refurbish that property if we're unable to sell it. Let's say you say you want to re, refurbish the property and you want to use it for the homeless. I see Miss Judge McLean's on the line. Uh, say you want to use it for the homeless. It's your property. You can do anything you want with it. You can tell me I'd like to sell it so that I can recapture those taxes. Uh, this decision, the decision will be up to you guys. Like I say, if we can't sell it at a tax sale because it's a blight on the community or, yep. uh, and once, we, once you tell me, hey, let's refurbish the thing, then once we refurbish it, it'll come back before the board. Uh, we will get, uh, of course, with, Commissioner Mitchell and her local real estate people and say what the property is worth. And then I think a decision will have to be made by the board of commissioners, what you want to do with that property. You can hold it, use it for women's shelter, homeless shelter, uh, whatever you decide in the future, mental health facility. Uh, it'll, the ball will be in you guys' court once we decide what we wanted to do with it. So it's, it's a number of uses we can do with it. And I appreciate that. And, and I'm, I'm going to be quick, but this was an important one because you're dealing with property. And whenever you talk about condemnation and things of that nature in the house, you know, foreclosures is always a sensitive issue, especially with the Supreme Court, you know, weighing in on evictions. When we know some of this is going to be coming even further, 
Um, so it just it made an interesting topic. So um, um, I've got one more question, Madam Chair, and I, I'd like to and supplement to this. Is um, Manager Ron Roberts out there, Madam Chair? May I speak yes, I to am. Him, yes. yes, Commissioner, I'm here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Madam Chair, may I keep going? Yes, you may keep going. Okay, thank you. Um, Manager Roberts, you, you know, this is a perfect segue to our recent conversation. So real quickly, I need to keep this really tight. Yes. Explain to the public and, and, and to everybody that, that was not aware, Neighborhood Stabilization Program, there were three of them, what we did and where we are, as quick as you can, just to give context. We're not going to solve anything here, but it, it helps with the conversation. Thank you. Yes, sir. So 2008, NSP1 um, was an initiative that uh, the, the county took on um, to uh, uh, purchase houses that were in distress, um, uh, refurbish them, and then uh, return them back to the tax roll. Uh, NSP1 uh, dealt with applicants that were 80% of the uh, AMI, adjusted median income for the region, I mean, for the, for the county, and then uh, NSP3 dealt with uh, applicants that were 50%. AMI. And so uh, over the since 2008, we've done 74 homes. We are in the process of closing the grant out. There is an NSP3 threshold of LH25 is a requirement that we have not met. So we are in the process of moving the money around, working with HUD and uh, DCA so that we can purchase uh, and, and, and do one more house that would hit that 50% AMI threshold. So I do not know the properties in particular that the tax commissioner is bringing forward, but I'd like to reach out to him and see if any of those might be eligible for that last project. Sounds good. That's all I needed. I'm going to keep this moving this, again to the group. This is more of a context to say, hey, we got to give him his power, sign off on this for a resolution, perhaps, but there's an implementation part on the backside that says, okay, what do we do with it once he does that? And I think that can be solved in another meeting. County Administrator, you hear the context to bridge the gap. We have functionality in place to help him with that. As you know, it comes to the Board of Commissions for the, the ultimate decision. So um, please, you know, help us implement what we've decided. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Commissioner Guider, I see your hand. Wait a minute. <laughs> there you are. You, yeah, you're on okay. you mute. You <laughs> Uh, okay, um, Commissioner Baker, um, now you can't have a land bank until you establish a land bank. I was invited by Frank Alexander with uh, uh, Emory to go up to Harvard to go through a long class. You have to establish a land bank. Now, when you sell property on the courthouse steps, you sell it as is, and the um, buyer or the purchaser of the lien cannot do anything for a year and 45 days because you have to give notice back to the original owner. So um, we, we're, we're not to confuse that with the, uh, the other program that uh, Director Roberts was talking about. But um, there's a, a legal process we would have to go through for a land bank. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that because yeah. um, to allow that, could you tell us what counties are already doing this and do they have a land bank established already? No, uh, I don't know if they have a land bank, but they, uh, Worth County is doing it. I know DeKalb County does it, and Arthur does it, some in his county, some in his county. Uh, and basically, it's just for us to recoup taxes. We oh, don't- I understand what you're yeah. trying to do, but I, I, I just want to make sure we do it legally. Right. Yeah, and, and that, that's why I said I'd have to bring it back before you guys. Uh, you'd have to decide, and we may have to go before the judge to- uh, to get it so also because you know there's a um Ram. you can sell it in rim uh, right and wait yes. that, that year of redemption so yes. I understand yes. that. and we would go before you you would have to say go before the judge we would go before the judge and do that and most of them i think we would just get rid of you know that's something that's a blight on the community if we can't sell it 
And we decide, again, you decide whether you want to fix it up, sell it as is. That we, if we can't get rid of it, then we would do that in REM, where some people will buy it. They're just hesitant, as you know, about waiting that year to yeah. have to, to get the property. So if we sold it at REM, in REM, which I think we could sell most of them, they don't have to wait that year. We just go before the judge and they would decide we could do that and then we would sell it right away. But most people are just reluctant to buy something and wait a year to have to fix it up. So I don't think we'll have many of these. It's just something that we need to have a resolution to do. Uh, and if we have to go before the judges, we go before the judges, let them make that decision for us and then we can sell it and they don't have to wait that year. But the NREM gives them a much stronger title to the property. But yeah. my my main concern was us fixing it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's just an option I threw out there, just in case you guys wanted it. But most of them would probably go NREM or or we'd, most of them would get sold. Or I, The main thing is if we were to go NREM so people don't have to wait that year for redemption. But I think you have to have a land bank before you can do, uh, you can put money, county money into it. I, this is something legal needs to look at. You know, it's been, I went up to Harvard, uh, I think the first year before I was elected, when Frank realized I was uh, elected to this position, he invited me up and they paid for it. The county didn't pay for it. But um, we just need to make sure that we don't, start putting money, county money into property when we don't have the authority to do it. And we'd have to have a land bank that has proceeds from certain things that they build up. And I think there'd be an initial um, uh, deposit into a land bank by the county commissioner. So anyway, uh, just wanna make sure that legal looks at this very carefully as far as uh, us, putting any money into the property. Oh yeah. We, I understand we, the NREM. There's no yeah. problem with the NREM because it does give them a, a clear title right away as soon as the judge signs that order. So yes. So with yeah, that we would make sure legal look at everything. We usually get Mr. Bernard involved in almost anything where we got a question about. And of course he takes most of our stuff to the court set right now anyway. So we would definitely make sure we did that, Ms. Tyler. Yes. Okay, with that, I yield back. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Tax Commissioner. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Any other questions for regarding this matter? And board, I would like to apologize. I got out of the gate a little early without calling roll, and I do see four of our commissioners, but I don't see Commissioner Carthen. Commissioner Guider, I know you're here. Commissioner uh, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson and District Two Commissioner uh, Kelly Robinson, I see you. I see you, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, are you available? I am here. Okay. It, all right. I, this Zoom has me a little spoiled. I can see names, and I thought I, I thought I saw yours earlier. So uh, we do ha have a quorum uh, board, but I just wanted to just acknowledge that you all are all present and accounted for. And before I go any further, is our fire chief on on the line? I saw him earlier as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Madam Chair. I, wanted, I wanted to give you the due diligence I see, and I always respectfully, if I see a new staff member or a new uh, leadership team member on, on the line, wanted to allow you to do the due diligence of welcoming your new uh, deputy. Uh, one I see, which is Mr. Um, Miles Allen on, on the line, would you introduce him and allow him to uh, just uh, give us a few words, please. I do that with all our new members of the family. Our chief, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank you for the opportunity to allow us to work on our restructuring. Uh, we're having some great success with it. Um, we are working to make sure everything is budget neutral and we can afford what we're doing. Uh, it'd be good, good stewards of the taxpayers' monies. Uh, we do have the pleasure of introducing this morning uh, Deputy Chief Miles Allen. Uh, Miles Allen is a uh, uh, come with us with a master's degree and several years of experience in the fire service. And uh, I'll yield just to let him introduce himself and, and we'll keep it moving. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to get my 
my video. Oh, there we go. Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, my name is uh, Deputy Chief Miles Allen. Uh, I am a 21-year uh, retired veteran of the United States Air Force. Uh, I, um, I'm 32 years in the fire service. Uh, um, I'm a Douglas County resident. I've been here for over 20 years. Um, uh, I have extensive experience in the fire service and I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Very glad to uh, uh, be a part of the Douglas County uh, team. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Chief Allen. And thank you so much, uh, Fire Chief Joe Levet. All right, I wanted to I wanted to make sure I extended the opportunity because I've done it in the past and I didn't want to uh, certainly come off message what I've done for others. All right, what I'm gonna do is move on to tab number six. Tab number six, we have, well, no, we have county administrative business. Do you have any business for this uh, for us this morning, county administrator? You on mute, County. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair. Good Mr. morning. Chair, staff, the community. Um, the only thing I have this morning is our new finance director will begin on Tuesday, um, Ms. Lolita Grant. I'm looking forward to her coming on board and she will be able to be introduced to you in this format on our next meeting. And just a quick reminder, I'd first like to wish everybody a happy, safe, and healthy 4th of July, and remind everybody that county offices are going to be closed on Monday in celebration of the holiday. And with that, I have nothing further. I yield. Okay. Thank you so much, County Administrator. And County Attorney, if you could just talk about, uh, speak to these extended orders. I know uh, I to make sure that our Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County are aware of these uh, the extended orders regarding this emergency that we're under. If you could, uh, County Attorney, if you could just brief our board right quick. This information is uh, hot off the press, Board of Commissioners. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so yesterday at 1.30, I want to say 122, 123 p.m., but in the afternoon, the governor signed two orders. Uh, we're not, I've been in contact with Jason and we're not exactly sure why the two orders were signed, but the order extended the COVID emergency and recovery relief program through the end of July, subject to further orders. Uh, and also the three effects I think it has on local government. Uh, the best we can tell is 22 pages, but we're getting guidance as, as time goes on. But the three things that I have briefed the county manager on, the county administrator on, is number one, it extends the time frames. Number two, it defers the executive authority to the governor. So local governments and, and private entities and the people, the public uh, are subject to the order. Number two, on Board of Equalization hearings, it's authorized those to continue via remote so that the taxpayer that's appealing a property assessment, if they appear in front of the Board of Equalization, they, not, they, don't, they can't be required to appear. Uh, and the last thing that's the most, and probably most of these orders deal with public health and safety. It's, it's extended the time frames for licensing, uh, both, uh, I'll start with health, uh, doctor's license, nurse's license, et cetera. If somebody is, the uh, processing renewals, those time frames are extended. Essentially, it gives latitude to public health officials to continue to do their job and not be necessarily subject to some uh, normal termination during the COVID emergency. Uh, but the biggest thing for local government, it extends, extends our ability to get state aid. And so uh, while this public health emergency is in place, it would authorize us to get GEMA and FEMA funds and usually the federal government, whether it be CARES Act or others, if you're qualifying for a state emergency and there's broad relief federally, we would qualify for any federal relief programs that might come be coming down the pipeline. So essentially we're still in an emergency until the end of July, subject to extensions. And we're waiting for uh, more clarification as to why the two orders came out within a minute of each other. Uh, Madam Chair, Jason, 
may have more to say about this if he's on the line. I don't know if he's on the line. Okay, thank you so much, uh, County Attorney. Uh, Director Milholland, are you on the line as well? Yes, I'm here. I, I was uh, okay. expecting um, you to fail. All right, from, from going through basically what they've done uh, before we were operating on well, there's different types of states of emergency that the governor can sign previously we were operating on a public health state of emergency the, the new um two orders that came out are just re regular states of emergency there's more teeth and more things they can do under a public health state of emergency that's been done away with us where you do the quarantine the, all the different regulations like this this kind of moves it back to what we're more used to dealing with with um, states of emergencies other than the restrictions on county governments and municipals um, going above or less than what is in the orders. That's the only kind of unusual thing that's been throughout this, um, any of these um, um, executive or uh, state of emergencies orders. So going through it, that's basically what, what I'm seeing is it's um, no longer a public health state of emergency. It's transitioned to a, a state of uh, a uh, I wouldn't say normal, it wouldn't be a normal state, of, but what we were used to seeing in a state of emergencies, if that makes any sense. Okay, thank you. Board of Commissioners, you have any questions regarding this uh, new state of emergency? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have. Hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. This is um, obviously this was something I brought up in times past um, in, in getting clarity on who makes decisions. You have obviously the judicial branch, you have executive branch. You have congressional, we all learned that from school, right? American government. And as we were going through this, and this is why I, this prompted this like, well, wait, we, we live in a courthouse. We have in judicial orders that's coming across that we've got to respect. But at the same point, you got the governor who's overriding and then you've got us. And so it was, are y'all aligning this? And again, even now we're trying to get clarity. So what I just heard is that, well, we just gave up our rights. This is going back to, Full teeth, you must do what we say, especially if you want to get this money. Pay attention. I like, uh-huh, which is okay, but as long as it's clear. So again, something comes from the Supreme Court of Georgia, an order that comes across to our local judges. Well, but the governor said this, but clean it up, guys. Make sure, and then here we are at the local level saying that we don't really have any real powers as relates to this moment. So again, and we're sitting around press releases and emails and all this. And you know, so, and again, it's only because I'm on the inside and I can see it. So let's just make sure that we're lined up, that we do have proper legal counsel, proper people who are in support of this, that, that y'all line these things up. Just don't want conflict. You have to talk. You can't be isolated. And, you know, the average person gets all these orders coming from over the, all around. And they converge. It's like, okay, well, what am I looking at? So, um, Guys, do the best you can with all this. Again, this is just for a time such as this. Every 100 years, we'll be fine. Uh, we just don't want any um, conflicts uh, accordingly. And I'm sure I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to our next item uh, board. We're going to move to tab uh, number six, which falls under grants authorization to accept uh, FY22 criminal justice coordinating council justice incentive grant in the amount of $286,695 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Director King, Jennifer King, you have the floor. Good morning, board. Uh, Ms. King is on vacation. So I'm, I'm Jamie Dauphermont. I'm Jennifer's assistant director. So I'll be filling in for her in her absence. Okay. Um, this grant is from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. It is for our medium and high risk youth. Um, this program, we run uh, evidence-based programming, um, aggression replacement training, Boston Light Skills Group, um, functional family therapy, and um, trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy um, for our medium high risk offenders who have been adjudicated. Um, we've been operating this program for since 2013. Um, with great success, and it is, does not have a match with it. So Ms. Hobson wanted me to make sure I let the board know that. Um, and if you guys have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Okay, thank you so much, um, Mr. Drabbermont. Any questions, board, regarding this matter? Thank you so much. 
We're going to move on to our next tab, uh, authorization to enter into a sub-recipient agreement with GEMA to apply for reimbursement for expenses for the tropical storm in October 2020 in the approximate amount of $60,387 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending final legal review. Director Milholland. Yes, um, uh, if you remember, we had a uh, tropical storm Zeta came back through back in October and we had some trees down, some damage um, throughout the county. We also had a lot of power that, um, power lines down. That's kind of what kicked us over to where we're eligible for this money. Normally on a, uh, on a disaster emergency this size, there would not be any federal funding, but because of the millions of dollars that were ended up being uh, spent by our Greystone Power, which is a uh, eligible recipient of money, it pushed us over our threshold and made us eligible to the, recoup some of our um, expenses. So we're going back through making sure that we, we've got every, everything captured and turned into FEMA. But in order for us to get the FEMA, it's a pass-through money. So FEMA sends the money to GEMA, GEMA sends it to us. And for us to um, get our check from GEMA, we had to enter into this agreement with uh, with them and saying we'll abide by all the uh, state and federal rules to be uh, be eligible. Thank you so much, Director Mahalan. Any questions from the board? Thank you. We're going to move on to our business items. Tab number eight, authorization to amend the Superior Court Judge's budget in the amount of $14,161.60 to fund an annual supplement for the remaining half of the 2021 for two new state-funded state, -funded state uh, staff attorneys. Judge McLean, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. Thanks for letting me appear before you today. So as Madam Chair stated, we're asking the board to amend our budget in this amount of $14,161.60. This is the supplement that the county pays to our present state-funded law clerk that is in Judge Emerson's office. A General Assembly decided to give Douglas County uh, two more uh, staff attorneys, one for Judge Adams and one for myself. So this request is simply to ask the board to allow us to pay those two attorneys the same amount of money that the present staff attorney uh, that works in Judge Emerson's office is being paid. So the actual supplement is 14 and change per staff attorney. But since we're halfway into the year already, uh, the request is 14 and change because it's half a year. Um, it'll end up being less money than that if you approve it because neither Judge Adams nor myself have gotten around to hiring those two attorneys yet. And the funding is effective today. It's gonna to take us a little time to, to find some folks. So it'll end up being less than that amount of money. If, if you'll allow me to take a moment to kind of explain uh, what a staff attorney for a Superior Court judge does and what the need is, it'll take me about two minutes if, if you don't mind. So a uh, little history. Douglas County became its own judicial circuit in 1980. We split off from the Tallapoosa circuit, which was Harrelson, Polk, and Paulding counties. And uh, at that time, the state provided one state paid law clerk for the judges, the Superior Court judges. And the county decided to supplement that pay to make it competitive for, with what other staff attorneys are paid in other circuits. And the tradition has kind of been that the chief judge utilizes all of that staff attorney's time. Uh, the staff attorney's office is in the chief judge's office. And from time to time, the General Assembly will allow the Superior Court judges to have additional staff attorneys. And that happened in the last session. Judge Adams and myself were each funded a, a staff attorney. Uh, the staff attorneys assist the judges in writing rulings, judgments, um, opinions, doing legal research, reading trial transcripts. And to give you a little perspective on that, um, most of our divorce cases and child custody cases at this point uh, are pro se. 
In other words, the litigants don't have lawyers. Uh, that means that the judges have to do all of the documents themselves to make sure that the case is handled properly because there's no lawyers to prepare anything. And we kind of have to help the litigants navigate uh, through the process. So Judge Adams and, and I have to do this all ourselves. Uh, we don't have a staff attorney to help us do it. I have to personally create each document like she does. I have to personally do all the legal research. I have to personally write every order, read every pleading, review every transcript with no help. And that's just the way it's been. And that's just how it is. Um, when we do a trial, the trial transcript could be thousands of pages. I'd sit down and read all of it. I have to distill it, summarize it, get to the pertinent facts, because I have to write a ruling as to whether or not that litigant's going to get a new trial. If I grant them a new trial, then there's no appeal to the appellate courts. If I don't, then it's appealed to the appellate courts. Um, a complex civil case could be six inches to a foot thick. I have to read every piece of paper. These are things that a court can do for the judge and distill this down to the key points that the judge needs to consider. And right now, Judge Adams and I have to do all of this ourselves uh, on the side. While we have criminal court, civil court, drug court, and mental health court nearly every day. Um, I'll just make one final point. Um, when people that come up to me that haven't seen me in a while, the first question they ask, uh, Madam Chair, is, are you going back to work yet? They think we haven't been at work because of the coronavirus. As you and the other board members know, we've been here every day. Um, and last year, during the height of the pandemic, uh, Judge Emerson, Judge Adams, and myself had uh, 3,226 criminal and civil cases assigned to us. We resolved 3,595. Uh, so we don't really have a backlog. We stay ahead. Uh, the salary, the total salary for this staff attorney position, which is the state funded part is 42, the county part is 14, is 57 grand. It's $13,000 below the national average for a judge's staff attorney. And there's no benefits. The benefits are all handled by the state. There's no county benefits. We're not requesting anything other than the uh, dollar amount. So I'm happy to answer any questions. And I hope that that y'all will agree to do this so that these two new attorneys will get the same pay that the present staff attorney has. Thank you so much, Judge McLean. Board of Commissioners, any questions? Thank you. Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, Judge. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Yes, you yes. Good to see you. I've been since I seen you last time. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll be quick, and, and I appreciate the history lesson, uh, because I think that's important. You know, 1980, when we split apart, you know, I'm, I'm going to high school. And I'd say elementary school, uh, yeah, right here, but yeah, okay, all right, fine, fine. And but, but to that point, but you, again, back then we had one Superior Court judge, now we've got three going on four. And your request for, y'all don't have no staff attorneys each? The population has doubled since the 1970 census. And I'm listening like, okay, really? Which is my point. We, we, we've got uh, an infrastructure that is stuck in time. And while I appreciate the efficiency that you so eloquently put down, like, yeah, but you, that's not sustainable. At, at some point, it just, it caps out. It caps out. Right, and it's like, okay, y'all gonna drop another fourth one, eventually another public defender judge, another um, juvenile judge, like guys, it's a bigger picture. So the point is, is that we're, where are you gonna put them? I, I hope that you got some space for them. It's not for yours to answer just, but okay, kind of administrator, one more time, where are we gonna put all these people? We've outgrown the courthouse. 
we've outgrown, how will we accommodate? So my point is just to bring it up, Judge, I have no problem, you will have no, um, I guess we will, as far as the funding mechanism, um, we'll come out to fund balance and we'll just create this and I have no issues to give them the appropriate budget, but I just, it's a bigger picture was not, now that we've agreed to it because you need it, I get it, but our job also is beyond appropriation, is to provide housing for again, one more time, these constitutional, these state officials. And it's a it's, it's an unfunded mandate, but it is a look. We got to accommodate this. Pay attention. Like I said, it's going to take time, but get ahead of this, guys. When we get to that mid-year retreat, we've got to make some serious decisions about the next 20, 30 years. So, anyway, Judge, I, that was all. I know you're a judge. You got to get back to the bench. But thank you so much for stopping by. We'll catch up um, accordingly, Madam Chair. I yield the floor. I'm good. Thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other remarks from the board? And thank you so much, Judge McLean. Uh, what, uh, in the famous words of Amanda Gorman, what was will never be. And we know that 1980 was quite a ways from here. And now we're 2021. And I uh, appreciate all the, the hard work that you and the other two judges, uh, Emerson and also uh, Judge um, Cynthia Adams have done and your work. And uh, I agree with the Vice Chairman Robinson. We wanna make sure we make you whole and and give you the support you need to be effective and efficient in your offices. So thank you for, I, I love the history lesson. I love when you say you, you do it all, but at the end of the day, we still, we want to make sure we provide you some resources and staffing to get you through the process. Thank you so much, Judge. Madam Chair, thank you. And just to quickly comment on Commissioner Robinson's remarks. Um, we do get it done, but I'll be honest with you, I take a lot of time away from my family. And, and, and the extra help would be a blessing to them. And uh, also, uh, the judges have uh, what they call a law library. When the, when the county built this courthouse, we, we used books, okay? We used books. Now we use computers. Yes. So they, they gave us a room and called it a law library. It had books in it. Well, I've outfitted that room for the staff attorney, the uh, desk and uh, computers and all that other uh, stuff. The state's paid for it. So we're going to squeeze the staff attorney in for sure. But Commissioner Robinson's point is excellent. We've long outgrown the space. And it was, you know, Cobb County when they built their new courthouse. Uh, they had several floors on top that were empty, mm -hmm. designed for expansion. We didn't do that. Yeah. But thank you for your time. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank that. you. And Judge, I think that what I know as we go forward, we will think ahead and build some additional space. And I know the county administrators thinking outside of the box. We don't want to just go with just uh, just to fit all the people that we have now in the building. We want to think futuristic. So we will, we're thinking in, in conversations with her, she is looking further, just regular, just building it to fit. We wanted to build to expand for the future. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we're going to move on board of commissioners uh, to our next item, which is tab number nine, authorization for chairman to sign fiscal agent contract for the family connections partnership grant. Uh, Douglas Corey in the amount of $48,000. Director King again, and I know we have uh, Assistant Director Jamie Dravenmont here. You have the floor. You, your mic is muted. There you go. My worst fear and it finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this is for the, for Core. Um, we are, merely the fiscal agent um, for this grant. We only process payments on their behalf. Um, so we don't really have a ton of information for this, but this is a grant we've been um, being the fiscal agent for for quite a few years at this point. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Draven. Right. We're gonna move on to our next item, which is tab number 10, authorization, well, to authorize the chairman to execute an employee contract with Yakaya Griffin as the Veterans Court Assistant Director subject to final legal review. This position is, is grant funded. Director Pruitt, Tim Pruitt, you have the floor. 
Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Board of Commissioners. Thank you for your time this morning. Uh, this is for our Veterans Court. We had previously hired and retained an assistant director for our Veterans Court program. That person resigned. So this is merely a replacement. We are not asking for an additional position. We're just filling an open vacancy. Uh, that contract has been updated with the current grant terms uh, for the 2021-22 year. A very important thing happened last night. Our old grant ended, and as of 7-1, we are in our new grant year. Uh, so this contract is merely uh, has been sent through legal. It is the same contract, just updated with the current terms of the grant per my agreement with the board. So I'm available for any questions. Thank you so much, Director Pruitt. Board of Commissioners, you have a Madam Chair, you're muted. Thank you. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions regarding the subject matter that was presented by Director Pruitt? Okay, if there are no questions, we're gonna move on to our next item, which is tab number 11, authorization for Douglas County's uh, Sheriff's Office to renew a contract with Administrative Solutions Incorporation for the DC uh, SO jail inmate medical plan in the amount of 31,000 $802.40 effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Tavares Pounds, you have the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can you hear me out there? Mm -hmm. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is for Janie Floyd. She negotiates our bills for the uh, doctor's visits in the hospital stay. She saves us a great deal of money each year. She uh, she actually looks at the bills and see what costs can be cut. And uh, this is no change from the last year's salary and she receives no benefits as well. So this salary that she's having or that we're proposing this today is the same salary from last year. So there's no increase. Okay. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel. We have any questions, Board of Commissioners for Lieutenant Colonel Pounds? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Lieutenant Colonel. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. This, this is um, an, an easy question, which is, are you satisfied with the services that are being provided? Let me start with that, because we wouldn't know. Yes. So are you are you pleased? We, we respect yes. the office of the sheriff. So help us understand what we're looking at. OK, go ahead. Yes, sir. The sheriff is very pleased with this service, uh, like I said. This lady goes in and negotiates the bills, and even like sometimes when we take when something happens and, and, the, and the suspect never makes it to jail before he has to go to the hospital, they start charging us, right? So, and he'll go back and say, "Well, we never took custody of him, so we're not liable for that bill until we take custody of him." So that's just an example of some of the things that she does. I got you. So, how long have we been working with her? Is, is it over five years, more than ten years? Do you know how long this? I mean. Is it an individual or is it a firm or a person doing business as a? It is an individual, sir. Okay. All right. And, and how long has she been performing this function for the for us? Since 2005. 2005? I'm not mistaken. I think it's since 2005. Yes, sir. That that's that's fine. Um, so, um, all right. So she's been with us about 15 years. So this is an individual. You know, we, we had this thing about service contracts. Um, anything over five years must be go out for an RFP um, because you want to make sure we get the value. And I guess there needs to be a distinguishing difference um, if there is one. Um, I mean, have, I mean, have you all ever looked at anybody else? Or, I mean, would you bring her on staff? I mean, I, I'm just curious as to um, contracts that are forever. Um, how do we deal with that? But I'm, I'm going to yield right now because my peers and, and get let them have a chance to weigh in. But um, I, I think it sounds like the sheriff is satisfied with that service. And so, uh, and um, the degree of quality of the service being rendered. So um, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm good. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other questions from the board or remarks from the board? Okay. If there's nothing else, I'll move on to the next item. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Pounds. I'm going to move on. Oh, you have the next one as well. Tab number 12 is authorization for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office to renew the stop loss insurance agreement July 1st, 2021 
through June 20, 2022 with HCC Life Insurance Company in the annual amount of $64,210.56 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Lieutenant Colonel Tavares Pounds, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, for the stop loss, this is the insurance that if it costs over a hundred thousand bucks for us to for our medical bills, then this insurance kicks in and they take, take care of the cost. And this is no increase from last year as well. So this is the same as it was last year. So there is no increase from in the total team of, of a little over ninety-six thousand dollars for the two. And you can't have one without the other. So Janie Floyd or the lady that does this is actually negotiating that as well. So we can't get that service without her. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Pounds. We're going to move on to tab number 13, Board of Commissioners approval of a contract agreement with Lionheart Consulting Group LLC to provide consulting services to Douglas County in the amount of $120,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank so you. this is a contract for professional services with Lionheart Consulting. Um, and the contract um, length will be from July 1st, 2021 through June 30th of 2022. Um, the contract is for professional services. And there are four um, areas that Mr. Um, the Line Hawk Consulting will be helping the county in. And the first is leadership and workforce development. The second is the continuation of our strategic planning execution and new, the new organizational um, general management advisory and as well as general management advisory services. Um, and the contract is for $120,000 and um, it's a professional services contract. And Mr. Um, Linus Savage from Linehawk Consulting is on the line if the Board of Commissioners has any questions. Okay, thank you so much, um, Director Stanley. Any questions from the board? Okay, then no questions, we'll move on to the next item. We're gonna move on to the next item, Board of Commissioners. Uh, approval of a utility relocation agreement with AT&T in the amount of $40,608.96 in connection with the Bright Star and John West intersection improvement project as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Director Miguel Valentin, you have the floor. Good morning and thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, as a bit of background, uh, whenever utilities have to re be relocated out of the right of way, uh, that is done at no cost to the county unless the utility is within their own easement. And that is the case for this intersection project. So whenever they have to go outside of the right of way and buy additional or replacement easements, there's a cost to them and a cost of relocation. Uh, is uh, the responsibility of the county. So uh, this is a funded uh, out of the SPLOS uh, allocation for this project. And uh, this agreement, uh, normally we would want to get this done as early as possible in the process. Uh, so as not to delay the project, they were kind enough to go ahead and do the work. There was only two or three poles they had to relocate. So the work's being done. Uh, and uh, this is so we can uh, reimburse them for the cost. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? All right, thank you so much, Director Valentin. We're gonna move on Board of Commissioners to tab number 15. Uh, we have a, a discussion items. Uh, if there are nothing, if there are no other questions related to our business items that we just uh, discussed, we can move on to discussion items. And tab number 15 is legal organ ordinance, RFP. Commissioner Robinson, uh, Vice Chairman, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, this mm -hmm. was just a, a follow-up um, to a, a prior conversation that we had. And um, again, um, based on what our auditor came back with findings and recommendation that was suggested and recommended to the Board of Commissioners that we put our RFP 
put an RFP out regarding our legal organ. He also highlighted that they hadn't done their financial records for some period of time over a decade. And it was perhaps in our best interest to give them to competitively allow them to compete. Uh, I just want to check the status with staff. Um, I don't know, is it um, Don, um, Director Evers or um, Don, um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director, either one of y'all, can y'all weigh in on where we stand regarding the ordinance? Tiffany, are you out there? Yes, yes, Commissioner Robinson. So as directed, an ordinance has been prepared. Um, it is currently going through the legal process and being reviewed by the legal department. Um, and we will be able to provide an update to the Board of Commissioners as soon as it's, as it's, as it's available. All right, so as a way of process, the, the only role that the Board of Commissioners has in this is to perhaps line up our local ordinance and how we select the legal organ. All right, so what it sounds like, um, Director Stewart Stanley, at our next meeting, we'll have our first reading, but we'll also put notice out there accordingly of an intent to do an RFP. The decision to do the RFP and the decision to decide on who gets the legal organ is going to be um, three constitutional officers accordingly, um, the sheriff, um, the probate judge, and the superior court clerk. Um, so we're just facilitating the process, but we're not in the room. Uh, we don't make that decision. So it's the majority or unanimously, um, those three will determine um, who ultimately will be the legal organ going forward. So I just wanted to check the status on that, um, to be on point, um, uh, that, that we don't drop the ball from an administrative perspective. And it sounds like you guys have gotten that. Uh, real quick, Director um, Evers, do you at least have a draft of an RFP? Um, I know it may not be finalized, but you do you have a draft of one? She may not be in the audience, Madam Chair. Are you on the line, I, Director Evers? Evers? Yeah, I do not see um, Director Evers on the call. That's um, fine. But I, I will certainly circle back with her and-, and That's right. Thank you, Madam Administrator, that's good. Madam Chair, that's all I want to speak. It's just the status, um, I yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments or remarks from the board? I had one more. That was just that topic. I have one more. Okay, go for it. Okay. Yes. Have more. Uh, again, as we, we move toward um, our mid-year retreat, and as we're looking at everything from organizational structure to um, all these different streams of, of financials and, and looking at a single view of the county so we can make a, 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 an appropriate decision to give guidance to staff, um, I had one question regarding our buildings. And again, it's great to talk about new shiny optics, but what about our existing um, infrastructure and specifically um, buildings. Um, and I had asked once before, I mean, obviously we changed all the lighting and things like that regarding our building to become more efficient, but there was a task or a specifically an ask. And I wonder if Director James Worthington is out there to answer the question about our HVACs, um, heating, whatever the thing is called, HVACs. And what do we stand on replacing roofs and, and, and um, air conditioning units, et cetera? I, I know you're going to do some homework and come back with in a, an inventory, and I know, uh, Madam Administrator, you were you you took that up. So, can I get a quick status on where that is? Not that we're looking to make a decision, but have we accomplished that to give us a scope of how big is our decision? What are we looking at? How many buildings? How many units, etc.? Sure. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I'm fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, yes, I've, I've kind of compiled a data set for that, um, and I'm sorry if I'm looking back and forth. I've got it on this other screen here, but. Looks like we've got slightly over 170 individual HVAC units, and that's throughout 85 different facilities. Um, of those- Wait a minute, James, you said 107 or 170? 172. Got it. Go ahead. Um, and that's uh, over 85 different buildings. Uh, and the building size is very great, at least from a small concession stand up to obviously like the courthouse that, you know, things this size. Um, of those, at least, uh, I've got 49 units that are at least 15 years old. I've got 25 units that are at least 20 years old. And the oldest that I've got on record is 25 years old. Um, so we do have some aging, aging fleet of HVAC units. Um, and on, on a typical year, looking back, I've on the years that I've been keeping records of this, we average about 10 of these per year that we have to replace. They're kind of beyond repair. Um, we do a lot of repair, but um, fortunately this year, we've only had to do one. So we're off to a great start as far as budget, but um, 
as far as the oldest units, you know, efficiency, when those came out 15, 20, 25 years ago, they were a nine or 10 efficiency rating. Um, up to about 10 years ago, they increased up to maybe a 13. Some of the most recent we have are as high as like a 21 seer. So we do have some efficient units, but it's only the ones we've done very recently. Um, I kind of put together a cost, um, and this is just a general kind of a budgetary number based on tonnage. Um, and if you were to look at replacing all of the units, they're at least 20 years old or older. Um, my rough number would be $215,000. Uh, if we're gonna look at replacing everything that's at least 15 years or older, you're looking at somewhere closer to a half a million dollars. Um, you know, that obviously doesn't have to be done in one year, but that's something we could consider some kind of program for, you know, maybe spanning over the next five, 10 years or do a continual program so that we could get a, an allotted amount and we'll, you know, can work on some kind of replacement contracts. Okay. Is that satisfied? Yeah, that, that's satisfied. But, but to that point, back to um, the conversation with Judge McLean, we, we have moments in time where we're not maintaining. We don't expand, and now we, it, 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 as Commissioner Mitchell said, it catches up with us. And so, to, to even think about like, okay, maybe y'all gonna push it back out another five, ten years to catch up with your prior work that we hadn't done. We just floating. So I, I'd like to, as opposed to, we we need to catch up. I mean, we're in a time and a period of time like, okay, guys, we you have a moment in time where you can catch this thing up and and help the future, but don't extend. Uh, our indecision to our grandkids and kids that will be here after us. And I just think like, our, our, our whole infrastructure is aging. The building's too small. The, 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 the root, everything's, is, it, it's aged out. No, you're fine, James, just, just me to my peers. You, you, we, we've aged out. Fix it or replace it. But it's one of those, we got to make a decision. But again, it's a trade-off of priorities. But we can't act like it ain't happening. It's like your body. At some point, you 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 don't have the right operation. You know, you you're not. Well, I'll just I don't need that right now. I'll deal with that. I'll deal with that. Like okay, guys. It it, it matters. It, the same principle applies with something where you have a total system failure. It's like our IT. Okay, guys. And it's and it, and it, it it's it's a false argument. Say, well, we don't want to spend taxpayer dollars. We like okay, come on. This is infrastructure. You don't deal with your heart. You don't deal with your your, your bloodline. You don't you don't deal with your lungs. <laughs> you gonna feel it. <laughs> Let me, you give me, Madam Chair. All right, I believe James. That's all I wanted was a discussion to know that County Administrator. I know you guys are working on this. Uh, I know we're talking about organization, all these other neat things that we need to go do, but we got to deal with this pre existing um, conditions that we have. That everything is aged out. Our parks are aged out. The deer lake is falling in. We got all types of stuff. Like okay, so. What is the plan to deal with this? And so, and again, you've done a good job of a quarter to a half million dollars. I mean, it wasn't as big as I thought it was, but nonetheless, I'm sure Commissioner Mitchell, you've got thoughts about roofs and all that. And that's not my swim lane. I just want to size it up from a dollar perspective, but that's good enough discussion for right now. I'm sure it's, it's definitely going to come up during the retreat that um, we need to deal with it. So Madam Chair, I yield. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I thought we had a five-year uh, capital outlay plan already implemented uh, with all the departments. And I just wonder if uh, one department needed an air condition for the uh, such, such and such building, would they not put that in the capital outlay plan? Um, I thought we were already addressing it through that procedure, but I could be wrong. Uh, James, you might can elaborate. So we have filled out um, HVAC and roofs and several different things on capital outlay, but as far as I know, I don't have any funding allotted for it. Um, if I, if it's hidden somewhere or something, I'm not aware of it. Um, but but they, can, they can list it in their request per budget. So we've been handling the actual air conditioning units. I say we, property management's been handling, you know, HVAC throughout the building, regardless of who it is, um, because it's such, it's kind of a specialty, you know, it's not something that, that your typical office person would be comfortable with bidding out or taking care of replacement for. So we typically handle those. Um, 
even for Parks and Rec? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I, it just seems like uh, I, I remember when I was a, the tax commissioner, we had a five-year capital outlay plan, but nobody was keeping up with it. And I thought we implemented it back so that someone would be keeping up with it. But uh, the parts and um, rec director would certainly, seems like they would know if they need to replace a unit, they do it with the, the pumps and the filters and everything at the food. So I was just uh, right. confused why that's not covered under the, the budget process. So. Now, Parks and Rec does handle the, their own boilers for like the um, the aquatic center, but that's it's a little bit of a different scenario than your typical HVAC. Okay, so it's not covered under the budget with the budget process. Correct. Okay, all right, I yield back. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. And also, I just want to add, Director Worthington, I believe because of the R22 Freon that's obsolete now in the United States, and certainly we just have a small supply left remaining. So all those, uh, the HVC, uh, HVAC units that are over 20 years old and really 15, you don't have anywhere anyway. Uh, we're going to run out of steam and the Board of Commissioners are going to have to upgrade anyway. So the, we have pressure from the United States putting pressure. EPA is putting pressure on us because you can no longer use that R22 Freon. So James, if you could just explain that to the board and let them know that this, this is something we're gonna have to deal with. Sure, yeah. so every so many decades, a particular Freon or gas will, will become uh, no longer allowed for various environmental reasons. And as those get phased out, the cost of those gases goes up exponentially, um, particularly once it's uh, prohibited from being manufactured, then it rolls over to where you can only get it as a, remanu um, a recycled gas. So it's something that's been taken out of an old unit, cleaned back up, and you can reuse it. Those gases can go where we may pay, say, you know, 30 to $50 for the current gas can be as much as, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars for the same amount of one of these old gases. So it makes the cost of repairs prohibitive where you, you know, you really just you're better off to replace at that point. And and we're reaching that on a number of these units. Thank you, Director Worthy. Sure. Madam Chair. Yes, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have. Yeah, so, so to your point, one more time, this is, is only unique because of the pandemic, because of the basically um, the reconfiguration of money from the feds to the state to local that we have a chance to really look, take a hard look at this. So what I'm asking the administration to do is just step back, right? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I acknowledge the past. It, it's not a, a criticism. It's to give a, a construct of, of going forward. It says, okay, guys, this is the first time we get, you know, we've washed up, now we've been backed up, now let's raise up. And look at this thing holistically for the first time, like, okay, now let's, what if we get it right, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a redesign, it's a redesign, it's a retransformation, it's, it's a whatever you want to call it, a re-energizing, but it's something that we historically never have had to do. So while I, I get the point that we've looked at this, so if you're going to look at energy, you're going to look at lighting, you're going to look at our HVSC, you get to look at stuff from a holistic on out. And to that point, it was, it was a shadow game. It was a pocket game regarding the money. It sat with the administrator. And to that point, yeah, there was pop, they had decisions to make, but you moved the money when you felt politically convenient in every year. Follow the money. Look how it was appropriated. That tells you what was happening. They didn't address it. That was the whole point. And so it was, I mean, that was just how it was done, but it's, there's a better way. So county administrator, we're really looking forward that we can get hold of this, say, okay, there's got to be a better way. There was nothing here. Nothing was codified. It was always in the moment, which is my point. And you get a chance to sort of, Madam Chair and Madam Administrator, there was nothing here. And y'all are trying to guide this thing where, like, when we're, we're asking these questions as if, well, well, we thought this, like, okay, there's nothing codified. The behavior, the culture wasn't lined up. And so that's what I'm saying. Okay, guys, if you want to make some solid decisions versus coming to the board with this smoke and mirrors and like, no, come on, guys, give me some data. Show us the data, show us the historical, show us how much it's going to cost. It's always hard to get like, okay, come on, guys. So this, again, we're leading to that retreat. And I'm sure this was a discussion. I'm glad it came out to really do an inventory 
and, and make it based on fact, evidence-based, as they said earlier, evidence-based, fact-based versus just, we just got this need and it's, 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 it's a cute story. So anyway, uh, I know you got to get out of here, Madam Chair. Let's go ahead and I yield. I'm done with my discussion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. All right, Board of Commissioners, we have uh, tab number 16, which we have Board Appointments, Department of Family and Children's Services, and that uh, those appointments will be discussed in our executive session. Uh, at this time, Board of Commissioners, do you have any other remarks or comments you want to make before I uh, certainly call on the county uh, attorney uh, regarding this uh, executive session? Okay. I do want to say to our citizens, um, just in case our uh, executive session goes a little long and then I may not reappear after uh, we return, uh, I would like to say, first of all, uh, number one, thank you for attending uh, my town hall last week, those who attended, and hopefully the, the, take, the video is still out there, had Dr. Uh, Kathleen Toomey here, who is the uh, highest uh, public official for uh, the, um, well, she's public uh, health official for Georgia. She advises the governor and she was here and she advised, uh, provided good advice for us. And I would like to thank our board of commissioners who attended the, the town hall as well and for your participation and support. We did have a mailer that just went out to all the addresses and hopefully everyone has received your mailer regarding vaccines. Uh, we're just asking and we're promoting the board of commissioners are asking our citizens to consider this vaccine, particularly as we have the Delta variant that's on the rise. Certainly, uh, they're making a lot of noise in the LA area, Los Angeles area. Uh, they're beginning to may per perhaps think about sheltering in place again because this variant is really running rapid on that part of the country. And we know what happened before. It starts on one end of the country and it just seems to migrate great from one uh, portion of the country to the other. So I'm asking our citizens to please consider this vaccine. For some reason, the Delta variant, and I said on numerous occasions, is attracted to those who have not had the vaccine. Today, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, um, the vaccine location will be closed. Our vaccination site, mass vaccination site, will be closing down at the Arbor Station. I mean, Arbor Place Mall. But however, we will uh, take those that same operation to our public health office that's located uh, on the Selma Drive. So we would like uh, our citizens to please take advantage of the vaccine. And also we have a website available where you can go on and make appointments. And also we are accepting walk-ins. And this is at the public health department located on Selman Drive. Um, Board of Commissioners, I don't have any further uh, remarks. And at this time I will call upon our county attorney to uh, regarding our executive session. Uh, uh, county attorney, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. We have two short litigation related matters and have your board appointments under personnel. Okay, thank you so much. County I'm sure. Attorney. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Can we add one more um, regarding real estate as well? Uh, we need a status on a couple of projects. Yes. Can we add that to the motion. Yes. We sure. Do. sure. Uh, Attorney, Attorney Bernard, can you restate? Yeah, we, we, we need an executive session for all three, Madam Chair. Okay. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Have, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We, we have a motion and a second. When I call your districts, please respond accordingly. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District four? Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right, uh, clerk, I will uh, allow you to provide instructions at this time. And uh, uh, the citizens of Douglas County, we will return momentarily. Okay, you should be able to look down at the bottom of your screen and click on breakout, breakout rooms and go into the room from there.
all so much board commissioners for your time uh, regarding our executive session and also would like to thank our citizens of Douglas County for, uh, for your patience as uh, myself and the board of commissioners uh, had uh, attended, or should I say, had an opportunity to uh, discuss some matters in our executive session this morning. All right, board of commissioners, do you have any announcements coming up um, that you would like to share with our citizens? Or yes, Madam Chair. Sure. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Yes, and it's really, uh, again, I know people are going into the holidays, so this is really probably for staff. Uh, to make sure that when we come out the holiday on Tuesday, I have an announcement regarding my upcoming um, fifth annual um, HOA boot camp. Um, uh, the goal is to have it at the new uh, community center if it's open by then, but if not, uh, we'll have a default location, but it will be hybrid. Um, I've got a, a pretty solid um, set of speakers, and one of the highlights we're going to talk about is um, community policing. Uh, we're going to also so make that as a note, we're going to be talking about resurfacing. Um, and if they want to weigh in on that, and we're going to talk about um, how to organize like neighborhood planning units to give um, our HOA presidents direct access to obviously my district and how they can weigh in on major decisions. And this is something that we've been working on in, in times past. And the last thing, of course, is um, HOA member certification and training at the local level. Um, obviously, go back to some of, the, some of the house bills that have been pushed before in times past that they hadn't got passed. So again, we've got an HOA boot camp coming up. And so staff, make sure we're you guys get with me to align that message and make sure we get that out. Madam Chair, that's all I needed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other uh, remarks from the board of commissioners? Commissioner Carpenter. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I just wanted to give a huge thank you to the animal shelter um, of Douglas County. All of the staff, Francis and uh, Vanessa, were absolutely amazing, and so was Lisa and all of the volunteers that we had on this past Saturday. Um, we had nonstop cars of um, animals, and um, the owners were just so grateful for what Douglas County did. We were able to vaccinate and to chip and give out free food to so many families um, who were in need. And so um, Douglas County, you, you just have a gem of an animal shelter and those who are over there working so tirelessly hard to make sure those animals are taken care of. And I just wanted to put out a plea that if you are looking for a great companion, the Douglas County Animal Shelter Services is open to you. We have over 200 pets that need to be adopted. And um, you could not find a better companion and a better um, addition to your family than those that we have at the animal shelter. So again, kudos to all of the staff and to uh, Christy, um, job well done on Saturday. Um, also, I'd like to say that I'm having a annual book bag drive and school supplies. Um, we will have two bins at the courthouse, one in Solicitor Sonia Compton's office, who is also helping me to put this on and one in the BOC office. So if you're out and about this weekend and through the week, uh, we'd love for you to pick up school supplies and um, supplies that you think the teachers would be able to use as well. So that is happening until July 23rd. If you have any questions or you wanna make a donation, please don't hesitate to call the office at 770-920-7266. And I wanna say thank you in advance to Publix for helping me to do this. They're one of our sponsors as well as Fit for the Future and um, the men's club. So that is it. Thank you, Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Any other remarks board before I close out? All right, uh, board commissioners, we will return and also to the citizens of the Douglas County, our legislative meetings, uh, which are our Tuesday meetings, we will return back um, live and in person on August the 3rd. Uh, board of commissioners, uh, we will make sure, I will make sure that you're safe. Uh, that we have all the precautionary me measures in place. We do have some shields, those uh, plexiglass shields. So we will be divided, but we will be together. Uh, the shields will, uh, again, uh, allow us to uh, promote that social distancing component. So the entire, uh, the cabinet that's uh, sitting up there with us as well. Uh, I'm working with our uh, Mark Price, who's working to get all the, thing, uh, all the components that are needed to make sure that we're safe. So again, August 3rd, Tuesday, August 3rd will be our first legislative meeting returning back, but we will continue our work sessions and our, our Board of Commissioners Committee meetings. They will uh, continue virtually into further notice. 
Also, uh, certainly I want to bring to our citizens' attention, and I've been harping on the, the, uh, this virus and also the importance of the vaccine, but my Chapel Hill article for June of uh, July that should be hitting your doorsteps very soon is about beautification. I've made a commitment to the Board of Commissioners that we will put our money uh, where our mouth is and stop talking about cleaning up and do something and take action. So my article is very clear and it's very uh, direct and it's uh, stating the fact and the importance of cleaning up our communities and cleaning up our gateways and all uh, so the roadways here in Douglas County. So we'd like you to take a look at the article of citizens and please, if you could join this campaign. I know we've had the vaccine, the coronavirus, we've all been, um, uh, I've been promoting those, but I know we are stressed, we're depressed, but there's no room uh, for us to certainly just, again, I say there's no room for second place and we just cannot be a, a county that's looked upon as being a dirty county. I had a citizen stop me yesterday and said she's willing to even embark upon uh, just uh, we have something on the weekend and we walk from neighborhood to neighborhood and pick up. But I told her that I had conversations with the sheriff and that's something that we're looking at uh, maybe uh, in the fall just to, to just go from the roadsides, just close down the roads and pick up this paper. But I do, we are putting money, we're investing. I will be bringing a plan uh, to the board of commissioners uh, as soon as I meet with the beautification program um, committee. Uh, that's led by our external affairs director. She'll be working with me and also our uh, director, uh, Miguel Valentin, and we'll be bringing some uh, some information and, and some numbers before our board of commissioners. So there'll be some data to allow them to, uh, to see what type of money and funding is required to put us in a position to be one of the most pristine counties in the state of Georgia. So that will be coming before you soon, uh, board of commissioners, citizens. In the meantime, I ask if you could just, uh, uh, number one, uh, vaccines, Number two, please take care of yourself. Wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day. Watch your social distancing. And also, please, just if you could, just pick up around you the paper. All that has something to do with your health. It has an impact on your health. If we have a, a dirty environment, it certainly will help foster this uh, virus. It gives us something to feed on. So we definitely don't want this virus to have anything to feed on. So. With that being said, uh, again, I, I know I left out one on purpose and it's about the mask. Where you, those who have not been vaccinated, vaccinated, please remember to wear your mask. Those, uh, our citizens who have been vaccinated, guess what, you uh, have the privilege of not wearing a mask. But I ask if you're in a confined space, please consider just having a backup plan, have one in your purse or your pocket. With that being said, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County, this work session is adjourned and happy 4th of July. Thank you.